So thank you. So today the topic is how our trading system work. I have taught this, uh, you know, how our trading system work before many times. I added three more slides today to explain to you further uh, from A to Z. So let me start. During the morning, before the market open, I have to do the homework. If I want to succeed, I need to do the homework. So even before the, um, like one night before, uh, go through the symbols, which are on my watch list one more time to be ready for next day. Uh, my day starts at five in the morning, Pacific time, I'm in California. So five o'clock, take shower, make coffee, meditate, go inside myself, uh, rate myself. I rate myself on a scale of one to eight, um, how I'm feeling. Did I have a good sleep or not? If not, then I, I'm aware of that I'm not 100% uh, fit and I may make a mistake. So I do that rating. Um, if I'm 100% fit then I and I'm excited, then I can still make some mistakes. So I'm aware of the two extreme. Um, the reason I'm fit, fresh, and I can still make mistakes because I may become relaxed and uh, maybe arrogant or sloppy because uh, I'm too uh, physically fit. I had a good, great sleep and maybe one day before I had a great profit. So now I'm going to become sloppy. So I remind myself not to do that. So after doing all this uh, you know, rating, it takes like two minutes because you're just doing it internally. You're not taking your temperature or blood pressure. And as the time goes by, the, the thing improves. You become more fresh and fresh. Then I come to my office, turn on my system and communicate with my team. And then I am ready to trade. So there is uh, something uh, you can call a discovery process. Whatever is the discovery process, you know, the trading system you're running or the visual or the chart pattern, whatever it is, which tells you that this is the symbol you need to take a look, further look. So you bring that symbol into your watch list. So that is the uh, the process. Um, uh, so the, I mean that's the that's the key of identifying which symbol out of 500. So I have a 500 symbols in a basket. I divide it into two or three baskets. One I call it hardcore. Another one I call uh, core, and then another one is a non-core. So hardcores are the core stocks. About 150 of them, which I must watch every day. So I watch every day. And most of them I'm trading. So if I look back at all the symbols I traded, mm, let's say last two years, three years. So so there are the few which are um, added, new ones, um, but most of them are the same. So those symbols which are same, they must be watched every day. So from those symbols, I'm, I'm making money. So about 167 I have, then about 250. 100 plus symbols, they, I call it core. So I need to watch them because these are the symbols which also move, even though if I don't trade, but they are affecting the market. So I cannot ignore those symbols which are affecting the market. And I'm not trading. Maybe they don't have a great option chain, or maybe they are not as, um, they are not the wallet, they are not. Um, uh, not the word volatile, active. They're not active. Maybe they are not liquid. Maybe their option is bad. Maybe some of the, they don't even have an option. So they are slow movers, but they do affect the market. So I keep them in the, in the, my list. I cannot ignore them, but I don't put too much effort in uh, trading them. So, so that's another core, not a core stock. And from time to time I catch because I don't want to miss the stock, which comes suddenly wakes up something happened and it wakes up and then um, knocking in my door and I'm not home. So I, I, I need to know who is knocking at my door. So that's in the other side. Now there are some other symbols which I call non-core. They, they are like AT&T, Verizon, uh, these kind of stuff, they don't move. Uh, their ATR is like 25 cents or 30 cents. So if they move 25, 30 cents, 
I'm not interested in buying options. If they have a 300,000 shares, I'm not interested in trading them, but I keep them because they are composed, they are the part of the market. Um, S&P, Dow Jones, NASDAQ, uh, and also Russell. So Russell 2000 stocks, when they start moving, they start moving in small cap. So I have a basket of the small cap stocks. So I don't trade a small cap stock, but when the market is, uh, is uh, gain some strength and momentum and the small price stock is start moving, then I start buying uh, those stocks also. And uh, I allocate a small percentage to the small cap because they are very volatile and I can wipe out my position in a small cap. People don't realize if you're buying $5 a stock, it can go to 10, but it can go to zero too. So it's the other way around also. So um, if so, but I keep it uh, for us. I, I especially also look at the option. So like Riot, Mara, all these small, small stocks, they can gain in option, they can gain 100 and 200% fast. So and they're small price options. So, so those are the Russell 2000 stocks. I make a list and I trade them and I eliminate them um, constantly. When the, when the market goes in uh, the downside, I start eliminating the, the small cap stock and then the mark, my basket of a small cap stock shrink. So my small cap stocks have six, seven, eight hundred uh, symbols. So that's a small uh, separate basket. So a lot of work goes on behind the scene uh, before I uh, get ready to trade. So small cap stocks studies, NASDAQ stock studies, Dow Jones, 30 stock studies, um, S&P 500 stocks, the market, the open position. So all that goes on and then the market starts in the morning. So when the market is starting in the morning, um, 6.30 a.m. Pacific. So I'll give you the example of uh, how I communicate to the members and how I also trade. So let's say, the market is started at 6 30. I'm watching my symbols, my open position. So there are various ways of monitoring uh, your position, overview monitoring, detail monitoring, and all that. So I go about uh, doing the detail monitoring and then I start doing this overview monitoring. And while I'm watching all my open position, I'm um, so the alerts are uh, getting triggered because I have done the setup uh, for the uh, targets alerts. So uh, not only the target price target, but there are various other alerts getting generated in the morning. So I, I have to do the work before the market close or during the market hours, such as all the targets. I determine three targets, uh, the percentage gains, um, if any positions coming in a danger zone from the expiry, any position which is which has earnings coming up. Um, um, so all of this like a matrix. So there is a matrix based on the open position I have, based on the days to expiry, based on the earning coming up, based on, on the targets, um, the various alerts are generated. So I have to look at those alerts. So I'll, I'll explain uh, how I communicate to the members. So let's say a trade is open. I, I see a trade in Meta and I say, okay, the Meta is looking good and I need to buy calls. So when I'm buying the call, so the stock, I'm reading the chart of the stock on a daily time frame, and then I flip on a lower intervals, et cetera, and I go through the process of uh, figuring it out and when it's the time to entry. And at the same time, I'm watching my option chain for meta and then deciding also what is strike to take. So decision to take the strike, um, 130 or 125 or 135 and if let's say the meta is trading at 131 so if it's trading at 131 or 128 uh, number of days left in the option expiry etc how many positions I have open so all that goes on in the analysis and then let's say I decide okay I think uh, 130 calls uh, for the month of December let's say it's um, I'm in the month of October so I'm in the month of October, uh, like a third week of October or second week of October. So I say, okay, December strike 130, trading at 10. So um, 
when I'm sending the alert, I am just telling you uh, just one line. In the, if you have a phone with us, I send the alert SMS that Meta December 130 calls buying to open at 10. That's it. One line. You, I don't uh, give you the long story uh, because nobody is interested in reading the story that I'm buying December calls because I expect the debt limit to be resolved and it will have this uh, effect or uh, Meta is coming up with this something new. No, 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 no such. You can read all the news available online. I don't tell you um, uh, this, this, uh, you see here the blue line and then you see the green line and when it does this and it happened this, so no, I uh, don't. I will give you the, uh, later I'll give you one solid uh, reason by a chart. So I, I prepare the chart and I show you, but uh, there's no uh, wiggly lines on my charts. Don't, don't want to get you confused. Your job, if you are my paid member uh, or a trial member, I'm just telling you that I'm buying Meta December 130 calls at 10. So the first is a Meta symbol and then the month and then the calls, it could be ports. So you need to know whether it's a call or put. And then I'm buying um, buying at $10. So that is the ask price. And I always buy third Friday expiry option uh, unless I specify. So if, I, if there's some other Friday, then I will specify the date. Otherwise by default is third Friday expiry. So once you execute the, uh, once you receive this trade, that's one line on email or a text message. So you open your um, uh, trading um, either on your laptop or desktop or your phone. You you find this uh, strike and you buy a ten. So you will see ten, ask price ten. Maybe the bid is nine seventy nine sixty. So the, once you get this. Uh, then, uh, once you get the alert, then you have to do certain things. Um, you may want to put the limit order. Uh, don't buy at the market. So I'm just telling you a few things you need to pay attention. Uh, don't buy the market. Put the limit order. Uh, you will get filled. I'm not. I'm not the kind of trader, Momo trader. I'm not. Uh, are you seeing my screen? Okay, so you see my screen moving. I was talking without moving the screen and there was nothing to show at that time. So you set the uh, limit order to, to, to get filled. So when we are putting the limit order, we don't want to walk away from that order. We need to see that our order getting filled. We are in a serious business. We are not in uh, some kind of hobby that we put the order in and uh, that's it, uh, see you later. No, uh, you need to see if your limit order gets filled because you may have to adjust your limit order. Um, I don't send any trade, which is a Momo kind of thing, which is flying, mm, overextended. Uh, I'm not chasing anything. I'm not looking for a great uh, you know, super 500% uh, volume. Uh, that's that's uh, that kind of trading is a loser's trading when you uh, receive alert. You know, uh, volume 500% buy now, and then people start chasing uh, that stock. And instead of uh, let's say the option is at 10, it's trading already at 11.50. And um, uh, I receive email. Hey, it's trading at 11:50. I just happened to open your uh, um, message. I'm late, but should I buy at 11:50 or 12? So maybe at 12, I'm sending you alert to sell. Uh, so don't buy at 12. If I send the alert at 10, so if you miss it, sometimes it so happens you just miss it. It's okay. There is always another trade. So I don't. It doesn't. I. I it doesn't bother me much. So don't walk away with your limit order. Do not buy at market price. Uh, ideally, you need to shave the spread. If you see, there's a sometimes uh, there's a spread uh, which is not uh, which we don't like. So straight, the ask is at ten and the bid is at nine fifty nine forty. So there's a um, 
So in option, so this is what uh, traders don't understand. Option, you immediately lose. As soon as you put on the position, you lose. You gain because you're betting that the stock will move in your direction. And how you lose immediately, like within uh, one second, because of the spread. So anything which has a spread, you lose. So well, for instance, if you um, if you travel overseas and you lend, uh, you travel overseas and you lend it, let's say you lend it in Hong Kong or Singapore and you want to exchange your money, um, you give $100 and he gives you something and then you look at the, uh, the buy price and sell price. If you give, if he gives you the Hong Kong dollar uh, and then you immediately give him back and you say, no, I made a mistake. I want my US dollar back. He will give you $90 maybe. That is his money, uh, commission, $10. So same way, when we buy option, we buying option at the ask and we need to sell at the bid. Market maker is making the money with the, with the spread. So if the spread is big, we immediately lose money. And there is always a spread, uh, 20 cent, 30 cent, 40 cent, depending on how volatile the stock is, depending on what the market maker is seeing in his book. So he suddenly sees uh, something and then he say, oh, I need to lower the bid. So he dropped the bid or I see something, he raises the ass. So we need to be careful with the spread. Maybe in the middle, you can uh, take the ask, you can take the spread um, bid and then divide by two. So that is the mid price. Maybe you can uh, set the order at the mid price. So if the ask is at uh, 10 and the bid is 980, the mid price is 990. So maybe you can put 990. You won't put 1050, 1060. If you are buying at 1050, 1060, then you and um, and the, if the bid doesn't improve, you're losing one dollar per option. So be careful when you are putting your orders and buying it. You need to buy by shaving the spread. If there is a spread which is wider than normal, you don't want to buy at the market price because you buy at the market price, you are at the mercy. You get filled. Whoever is giving you, you know. You get fill whatever they want to um, fill you with so you don't want to do that and uh, the stock so when you're setting your stop and when you're setting your buy order uh, when you let me see the screen is moving yeah it's moving so when you see when you set when you put the limit order you also need to see the stock where is the stock so i specify in my in my alert the stock price is at this price so so now you got the option price and you also have in the body of the email the stock current price so stock current price is this let's say the stock is at 129 so and you need to buy meta at 10. so meta you buying at 10 the stock price is at 129. when you open uh, the alerts are delivered within within few seconds uh, we have a um, i don't know you call it a state of the art or what we pay a lot to deliver uh, we have a separate server to send you the alert so uh, the alerts are generated within within second within five seconds i get my own alert on my phone i get the alert on my email i get the we get the alert in our team um, you know team list so everything is monitored the trade alert is generated within five seconds you get the alert so the price is not moving uh, like going crazy and the stock is moving because i adopt the process of stocking so when stocking the the trade should be tra the stock should be trading in some kind of a range it's not going more more uh kind of a situation where you just uh, Okay, buy now. It's trading at 129. Oh, is it trading at 130? Oh, 131, 133. By the time you receive the alert, it's already at 135. So there's no such thing like that. Um, once in a while, maybe I, you know, it so happened the stock just uh, suddenly starts moving. And so it's, it's uh, very low. So your stock is trading in a narrow range. You're putting your order at the limit. You're checking your spread. Um, and then um, what else? Uh, so let's say you buy five contracts at the limit. Um, so see if all fives are filled. 
if maybe four got filled and one is just there and you did not pay attention. So if you're buying five, see if you got five, not four or not three and the others are just uh, waiting to be filled. If you did not get it, you got partial execution, maybe you just cancel it. So you know you, you're, you're not bidding for something out there. You got whatever you could get. So, and if you don't get filled, it's okay. Don't worry about it. There's, uh, it will get filled. Market will move in a narrow range and you get filled. So, it's, and then after I send this limit order, um, I send the target also. So I send three target and I will explain the three target. So if you are looking at the target email, which comes later and you have not executed the order, uh, then, you you would know the profit potential based on the target. So then it will help you in deciding whether you want to pay extra. So I will explain to you some guidelines I prepared uh, for you to help. So people ask me question, hey, I missed this trade and well, do I chase it? So, so I said, okay, I need to prepare a guideline for the members. So, so you know, uh, what they can do. So, you don't want to pay uh, over the limit, but once in a while, um, the stock is moving, and if you see it, so it's up. It's now it's based on your uh, your discretion, what you decide. So if you are buying five contract and you know you're not getting filled because it's moved, maybe you buy one or two contract and the rest of the three you buy later at the lower price. So here are some guidelines. So if the option price is 70 cents to $1, like a small cap stocks, sometimes I trade. So their option, they are small cap, the option prices are small. So you maybe when I send you the alert to buy at 70 and the bid was, let's say 65 cents or 68 cents, but now the option is trading at 75 cents. So you may pay five cents more, 75 cents. If you want to buy 10, con if you're buying 10 contracts at 75 cents, 70 cents, uh, then maybe you want to buy five, five contracts at 75 cents and then put the order for five contracts at 65 cents. So in on average, you will end up buying at 70 cents. So this is a, just a narrow range, 70 cents to $1, you may pay five cents more. If you, the option is trading at dollar or five to Mm, 250 range so another range i created uh, uh, this based on my experience i created the range so i say okay i can pay 10 cents more so instead of 105 maybe i got i need to buy at 115 if i'm buying 10 contracts so again uh, the contract i'm just giving you example of 10 contract it's not that you should be buying all the time uh, same number of contract the contract varies based on the option price. As the option price is going up, you're buying less contracts because the dollar amount is same. You you allocated your dollar amount, the fixed dollar amount for that trade. So as the option prices are going up, um, uh, you are buying less contracts. So if the option price is, is, is down, you're buying more. So you would buy, if you are buying 10 contracts at 70 cents, which means $700, you would buy only one contract at $7 price. So I hope you understand this. You will buy only one contract at $7 equals $70, 700. You will buy 10 contracts at 70 cents, which is $700. So uh, the amount should be same because when you are making money or losing, it should be the, it's a percentage. It's not the dollar amount. It's the percentage gain you make on your investment. You don't make the dollar amount. So, you know, you make percentage, not the dollar. Uh, so, so if you allocate $1,400 per trade and you're buying $7 contract, you will end up buying two contracts. If you buying 70 cents contract and you have $1,400, you will buy 20 contracts. So traders make mistake in buying 10 contracts of the $3 star, uh, option and the $10, 10 contract for the 70 cents contract. So they make a mistake there. So it's not good. So these are the examples, 10 cents. If the option is trading in 105 to 250, you pay 15 cents more. If it's between 255 and $4, et cetera. So uh, the reason is you can pay more because these stocks are high flyers. 
So they move a lot, a $4, $5, $7, $10 move. Their average true range is very high. In a given day, they move seven, $8. So when you multiply by their delta, 60 delta or 70 delta, they would they move, or the option moves seven, $8. In any given day, they can move. So if the option is moving six, seven, $8, uh, paying uh, 50 cents for a few contracts and then lowering the uh, limit, uh, for few contract will work out for you. So these are just exceptional cases. So this is a, just a guideline for to chase or not to chase. It's also written in my the guidebook I have for on um, it's a 71 page PDF I sent out. So you can read in that guidebook. So uh, so here are some more tips. Don't be over anxious anxious on partial execution. So if you're buying four contract and you get fill three, it's okay. Uh, uh, you don't have to get another one. Uh, there is always a tr new trade, and you you don't know if this trade will work out. Maybe this is a loser trade. So uh, uh, think about it. You got lucky. Instead of buying four, you bought three, and um, the trade did not work out. So uh, just but um, uh, remaining. Uh, if if you just uh, get hang up on your remaining contract you put the order for 10 and you get filled for seven and there's a three then the uh, don't worry too much is uh don't be chasing it like oh i only got seven i need to so even if you're trading on your own this is just a general guideline if we don't need to chase it's your bit it will come down if it get filled if not then it's okay so if you're trading you need to remind yourself that i shouldn't be chasing something someone will sell to me uh a stock trade in a burst and then uh, they subside. So there's always uh, some a burst and then they subside. And you also cannot leave your limit order forever. So if it doesn't get filled, you make sure you cancel it. There's no outstanding order uh, hanging in there. Uh, maybe you got filled at seven contracts and then suddenly the stock, is, uh, and then uh, let's say you bought seven contracts at 70 cents and it went to dollar 10 now it's a dollar 10 and uh, three contracts are hanging there for you to get filled and you're not getting filled and you leave it open let's say the stock starts to tank so on the way down you got filled so now you're not feeling good on the way down you got filled so you need to get filled when you want to get filled if not then you cancel so this is just a general um, common sense in trading so your buy order should be good for a few minutes otherwise you should just cancel it and move on so after we send out the trade alert and um, i i do send out the one target uh, uh quickly so people know the current price is this and this is the target then i give you the refined targets in a proper format i give you all those three targets and i'm also uh, fine tuning my target I, when I'm sending the alert, I know where the, where the stock is expected to go in journal, but then I, mm, I put my attention to evaluating the targets based on all the techniques, the technical analysis, based on uh, the chart reading, based on the support and resistance. So if I'm buying some uh, call, then I have to evaluate all the resistance levels, where the resistance is, because the resistance do work, support do work. It's just that we tend not to evaluate properly the support and resistance. So is it a strong resistance? Is it just a strong? Is it weak resistance? All that goes into play for the call trades. So based on all the targets or the resistance levels and where the stock have been before, I create uh, another email. So, so uh, the stock target determination is science and an art. So there's some mathematical formulas, some subjective and some adjustments goes into uh, determining the target. So what I do, I provide you three targets. So I provide you three targets and I call it um, green, yellow and red. And uh, it's first target, second target and third target. So I also call them green, yellow, and red, which is first target, second target, and third target. So it's like you know, the traffic light. So think about the traffic light. So if you're driving and you see the traffic light right there in front of you, which is, let's say, half a mile, your GPS is saying, mm, let's say, half a mile, there's a 
traffic signal so you see that traffic signal is green so you see okay it's green so it means in uh, if a half a mile uh, is not there yet and you can cruise you can easily cross that green um, light but if you see yellow and you're only if you are a half a mile you will not be able to reach even if you are little, just one or one block you would slow down and if it's a red, then you really prepare yourself to to stop because it's danger. So, so this is the way I define the target: green, yellow, and red. So, first target, second target, and third target. Now, there is something also called beyond red target, which is you know beyond the traffic signal on the other side. So, there is something on the other side. Once the light open, then you will cross that distance from one side to the other and then you go on the other side and then you start cruising so the same way uh, the targets i set up once the red target is crossed um, successfully as you reach the other side then you start you know you just start to accelerate especially if there's no car you start to accelerate and move forward same way the stock starts to accelerate once the red target is crossed so so i will explain to you what these are so after i send the buy alert and i watch the order and i understand that okay there is no issue with the buy alert sometimes i miss a spell or sometimes maybe i mm, did some typo so i make sure that i did not did any typo for instance um um instead of uh, instead of December, I missed the E or, you know, so some, some kind of a thing I did. So instead of 130, maybe I typed it 13. The stock is trading at 129 and I typed 13. So it doesn't make sense. So most of the members, they understand, okay, he meant 130, but I corrected. I sent out another immediate correction because I, I look at it, I say, oh, damn, I, zero is missing here. It's 130, is only 13. So I sent out that. Uh, if I make a mistake, I try not to. Once the order is filled, then I send out the target. So I explained to you the green, yellow, and red target. So what kind of a trade alert I send out when the targets are hitting and why I do that. So the green target is the immediate target. So if, uh, if you are traveling, think about it. If you're traveling from San Diego to Seattle, so uh, you put, you say, okay, I start my journey from San Diego, seven in the morning, and your GPS, if you put direct Seattle address, it will say maybe 24 hours. In 24 hours, you will arrive uh, in Seattle. Uh, but if you put uh, from San Diego to, let's say, uh, Dana Point, it will say 30 minutes. So think about that, or maybe LA, uh, one hour. So it's early morning. So you know, one hour, to LA is uh, in early morning. Yeah, you can reach. So that's the that's the thing. Now think about it. The stock is trading, let's say, at 130. And if the green target is, let's say, the stock is trading at 100. The green target is uh, you decide that is is one of four. So it's four percent move, and there is no resistance in between. There is uh, the, you see the clear path. The it's a brand new catalyst. So the green target have a high probability of of hitting. So the the closer is the is the destination, the the GPS what it told you uh, you will arrive in 57 minutes. You will arrive in 57 minutes. But if you are going to Seattle, the GPS says 24 hours. But you did so many stops, you arrive maybe in four days. So that's the way the stock is uh, trading. The, the further the targets, it's harder to estimate, and it takes time. So and then you have to assign the probability of that target. There is a high probability when you start uh, from San Diego. Uh, there is a high probability you will reach safely in LA than when you are trying to travel to Seattle. Uh, there is a less probability. You, you will, I mean, it's lesser than the probability of reaching LA than reaching Seattle. Something can happen because of the distance. 
So there's a 95 probability of a stock hitting the green target because it's just close 100 and 104. So when you trading, when you're putting on the trade, uh, when I'm putting on the trade, I immediately look at that. Uh, is there any hurdle in between? Uh, like there's no hurdle, immediate hurdle. If there is an immediate hurdle, uh, even though a stock is looking good, I need to avoid taking that trade. So example, if I'm traveling from San Diego to Seattle and I, my GPS is traffic jam right at the entry, uh, the entry to the freeway, may uh, complete. So I may avoid a uh, uh, journey at seven in the morning. I may wait because I know the traffic jam is no use. Uh, so I may start my journey at nine. So I may wait for another day for that hurdle to be crossed or or something happens, something which tells me some evidence which tells me that that hurdle is not there anymore. So by looking at the GPS, I say, okay, there's no more red, is a kind of light red or maybe blue. Now I start my journey. I used to do that when I commuted, uh, when I was a consultant, uh, I used to sleep on the shoulder or somewhere or um, I, uh don't even leave the office so i you know i'm sure you guys do that too or so you know someone so you don't leave you know what's the point so so same way 95 percent probability of a stock hitting the target so when we initiate a trade we need to make sure that there is no immediate hurdle in the target the the green target or the yellow target and if we see the hurdle uh, or some resistance uh, which is far from the entry so if i'm entering at 100 and i see the resistance at 113 so it's kind of far 13 points i will get out earlier than um, before it reaches even 113 so so when the green target hits so as soon as the trade is uh, sent the targets are sent i set up all the alerts in my system so that I can be notified on time when the target is hitting. I get notified even before the target is hitting. So if the target is 104, you may want to set at 103.50. You don't want to set at 104 uh, when the target is hitting. You may want to set two alerts, one at 103.50 and one at 104. So you get notified at 103.50. You, uh, you need to do something at 103.50. Uh, and you will do something at 104 so there are two two different events occurring the target of green is 104 you set the alert at 10350 when you get the alert on your system or on your phone uh, that triggers you to take some action then when it's uh, 104 that triggers you to do something so as the trade is progressing something is triggering and you're taking some action based on that trigger so when you receive the alert, the green target, and uh, and if you have set the alert, you receive. So it depends how many contracts you have. The green target is the easiest target, and uh, don't be selling everything at the green. Um, you know, people like to ring the register fast, fast because they feel good. So don't uh, just sell everything at the green, um, because the green is the easiest target. Is 100 and 104 is easy. It it will hit. So maybe uh, you sell one third of your position. So um, if you bought six contract, you can sell two. So because the stock is expected to move higher towards the yellow target. So you need to remind yourself the stock is going to travel further towards the yellow, which is the second target. So we send out one third alert, sell one third is sent to the members and we write it down. We know that we did send uh, one third alert. So I am aware of that I send the alert of Meta to buy calls and these were the target, the green hit. So when the green target is hitting, so many things needs to be evaluated. Um, if the green target hit, then what is the profit uh, percentage? um in the in that trade so i immediately evaluate so i uh, also i'm seeing on my screen um if i bought at 10 and the green target hit at 104 so uh, it's good 104 hit if i was trading a stock but if i'm trading option and 104 is triggering what is my percentage gain in the option maybe it's not what i uh, thought 
because of the time decay. So it did hit the target green, but it took a while, like two days or three days or four days, uh, sometimes five days. So, so that 104 is not as good as if it has, um, the if the stock has hit the target uh, very next day, because the very next day it hit, uh, the $4 move in the stock, translated into let's say 30 percent 40 percent gain in the option because of the fast move but if the, the target hit in four days the option gain is uh, only 15 percent so if that's the case so i immediately revise i go and uh, analyze the trade and i say okay no the green target the members are not make, going to make much it's not enough uh, so we need to adjust so i adjust it i adjust my position and I send you the revised target. So what I do is I uh, make it uh, higher. So I make the yellow into green if it's possible. And then the red uh, target becomes the yellow target. And then I re I give you another red target. So I do all this, uh, you, know, it's, you can say upgrading the target. So if you're trading a stock, it's good. But if you're trading option, um, uh, you need to watch that also, that how much time it took. So number of days, because the number of days every day you're paying some kind of a rent uh, because of the option, the, it, the way it's designed. So if the, uh, if, if, the, if the minimum percentage gain I require is a 30% gain in uh, the green target. So if the green target is hitting and uh, I see the 30% gain uh, in the option or more, so sell one third. So I get the alert uh, in my uh, trade trading platform uh, when the option is hitting a 30% gain or when the option is, or when the stock is uh, hitting the green target. So there are various uh, alerts. So 30% gain, I receive the alert. Uh, the stock hitting the green target, I receive the alert uh, and other alerts. So one third is sent. So now the yellow target, which is the second target. So yellow target, which is the second target. So it's after the green target. So just think about it. You, you, you left from San Diego, you're going to Seattle. So think about the yellow target is Santa Barbara or San Francisco, something like that. So let's say it's a yellow target is San Francisco. You left on San Diego. So it will take you, it, you will take some time to reach San Francisco. You may stop somewhere and instead of GPS is saying seven hour drive or six hour drive, you arrive like 14 hours. So, so, and then you may not arrive in San Francisco. You may stop for a few days uh, somewhere in Santa Barbara and you decide to make a U-turn. So think about this analogy. Then you may uh, stop at Santa Barbara and then you say, okay, no, I'm not going to Seattle, um, fine. And then you come back to LA and then come back to San Diego. So the stock can do that too. They can go to yellow target and then they reverse course and they come back to green and they come back to the entry price. So it can all happen. You don't have a control over the market. So, so that's why the probability is less, 85%. I try to do the best analysis and figuring it out where is the yellow target, which is safe, and I have a some kind of a high probability of hitting it. So again, the analysis goes into and I set the target. So it could be in our example, if a stock is trading at 100, the yellow was 104, the uh, no, the green was 104, the yellow could be 106 or 107, so three four dollar more. So I, when the yellow target is hitting, I expect uh, the option to make, um, it depends if it's a low price, then it could be 80% gain or 100% gain, something like that. But if it's a normal $100, $150 or something like that, then maybe we are having 40% uh, gains or 50% gains at the yellow target. So something in, in that range. So when that happens, either I get the alert, so I've set the alert for 50% gains. So when I get the alert for 50% gain, I immediately look at where is the stock when I get the 50% alert. So where is the stock right now? 
what else is happening uh, because I am on a high alert to to make sure that I don't lose this profit. So 50% alert, let's say. So I look at the yellow target. A yellow target has not hit yet, and I have a 50% gain. So I say, okay, uh, yellow target is one dollar away, and I have 50% gain. So I'm watching. So there is a process for watching. So I do that. So trigger, watch. So I know if uh, when the yellow target hits, I may have a 55% gain or 60% gain. So do that kind of calculation and estimation. Also, uh, if the yellow target is hitting, maybe I don't have a 50% gain. Maybe I have 40% gain. So I cannot force the trade to make me 50% gain when the yellow target is hitting. So I'm bound by the yellow target. So yellow target may be my limit. So traders make mistake in um, setting up their profit objective they they you, you cannot have a profit objective when you are at the mercy of the stock or mercy of the market mercy of uh, millions of other things going on you you cannot you 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 need to be happy in what you see and then you decide so your 50 percent is not there you cannot get it yellow target hit and only 40 percent why Maybe 50% um, will come at the red target. Maybe it took time for you to, for the stock to hit yellow target. It, it, it just uh, got stuck. So, so there are thousands of variables. So the yellow target, the way I designed the yellow is where some kind of a resistance is there. Some kind of um, like a pit stop. Some like when you, you know, when you're going to San Diego to Seattle, uh, you say, okay, I have seen LA many times. I don't need to stop at LA or anywhere. I will just stop at Santa Barbara. So some kind of a attraction is there. Something is going on where the stock will stop for a while, like a pit stop. Something it will do and it will rest. So that area where it it is expected to rest, uh, that's the yellow target. So when the yellow target is hitting, or the 50% gain or 60%, then um, I get the alert and I send you the alert, sell one half. So I send you alert to sell one half or three fourth of your original position. So if you have eight contract, you may sell four or six, something like that. And you may see the pullback. So the way the yellow target design, you may see some pullback occurring, um, occurring on, uh, yellow target so um so again uh, the thing is i'm here you are there i don't know where you are what you're doing uh, there are millions of things do you know who i am you're just listening to me you don't know who i am right i don't know who you are what is your portfolio what is your objective what is your age what else you're doing what else is going on in your life how your brain is working uh, what is your objective? There are millions of things. Only you know you. So if only you know you, sometimes, and most of the time you don't know you, uh, nobody knows you except God. So if you don't know you, how do I know you? So it's just uh, guidance. So, so only you know if you need to sell half or you need to sell three-fourths or you need to sell all. Maybe you're going on vacation tomorrow. So, so only you know what you need to do. This is guidance I'm giving you. So sell half or sell majority alert is sent. It doesn't matter what I tell you. Uh, sell half, sell all. It doesn't matter. You would do what you think is right for you at that very moment. So maybe you make a mistake. You intend to sell half and, oh, man, I made a mistake. I pushed the button and I forgot to change uh, from eight to four. And now it's too late, it's gone. Oh, but, oh my bad, it's okay. So all that goes on. Maybe you were driving and you received the alert and simultaneously you open your uh, app and then you just push the button. That's it, it's gone. So only you know you, so this is the guidance. So when uh, yellow target hits, so I record the yellow target is hit. So I know that the yellow target is hit and half of the position or three fourth position is gone. So now I have some left over. So I'm watching that position where I need to sell the rest of my position. So um, there may be many, many events uh, triggering which will tell me to sell the rest of the contract. 
it could be that I see I don't um, maybe I have another open pos um, uh, like you know the game with uh, you 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 reach uh, let's say you travel from San Diego to you're traveling from San Diego to Santa uh, Seattle and then you arrive in San Francisco so you say okay is enough I arrive in San Francisco I'm happy with that let's uh, settle here and then we will go back to San Diego and start the journey again. Maybe you, this time you start going towards um, Grand Canyon. So same way, when the stock reach a yellow target, maybe you just, uh, I'm, I'm seeing another trade, which is just starting fresh. So it's kind of fresh signal, uh, fresh ch um, um, uh, change in the trend, uh, a stock which is moving for three, four days, uh, and then the stock, which just started, and I, I have to make sure that uh, the stock, which is starting a fresh cycle, is indeed a fresh one, because I'm making some decision when I'm initiating a new trade. Um, so there's a there's an analysis going on whether I should stick to this trade, which is at yellow and headed towards red, or I sell the rest, whatever I have left and um, close the trade and initiate a new trade so there's so many things going on so 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 think about that especially if the yellow target is hit and you sold let's say at 50 percent gain and now the rest of the target the rest of the uh, open position is there and you still have 50 percent gain or you have 40 percent gain or you have 30 percent gain and it's not moving it's hesitating so you may want to close that trade so there's so many decisions go uh, in in closing the rest of your uh, position in uh, in that trade so i monitor it and i send you the alert call sell rest so i know i have sent you sell half or sell majority i know in my book what i sent you before so by looking at it i say oh i have sent them the sell half i sold half i have left over and um, sell the rest just move on maybe it's a friday and monday is a holiday so i sell i don't sell just because it's a weekend it's coming i don't do that uh, there has to be some reason people sell they say oh you know i don't want to carry my position on the weekend god knows what will happen on the weekend so so that's not my style of trading um only god knows what will happen on the weekend i am fine with it and i'm 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 position people say i don't carry any position overnight so I'm not a day trader. So only the day trader don't carry their position overnight. They close the position same day. So I'm not a day trader. This is swing. I am happy with uh, keeping the position open over the weekend. And also on the long weekend, um, I figure it out when I initiated the trade. So when I'm initiating the trade, I know all the hurdles coming in. I know the weekend is coming. I know the long weekend is coming. I know where's the earnings. So I have evaluated all those hurdles. When I initiated the position, it's too late to to think. Um, most of the time, is is you know it's too late for you to. Oh, the weekend is coming. I need to close the trade. Who knows what will happen? Let me take this ten cent profit. So that's wrong thinking. Ten cent profit just because the weekend is coming. So after the yellow target is the ultimate target, which is the red target, which is our destination of uh, Seattle. So. I reach San Francisco. Now I'm headed towards uh, Seattle. And if I keep going um, after the Seattle, I may end up in Canada. Mm, and I mean, I at the border of Canada. And then I will be, you know, sent back. It has happened to me, you know, when you go to the near the border and you, you don't have any passport and they, they make you turn around. So same thing is the red target. When when you red target is like a major resistance, something major where the stock is getting all the stocks get overbought. So they get overbought, they pull back, and then they fresh the journey starts fresh. So it's okay if you are a stock trader, uh, buy and hold or a position trader. So it's okay that kind of trading. You got into the right trend. The trend has started and you are in the trade. But for option trading, you have to uh, evaluate all these hurdles because the option uh, profit is there and tomorrow is not there. So red target is the ultimate target where the major resistance is there just above. So in case of calls, if we are trading puts, then 
the the support needs to be there some major support where the stock will go there and then it will magically stop right there like in its track and then it will turn around for a few days or maybe many months and that just like play possum you know become dead it's not moving it's just a stock it's doing its bigly bigly small 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 bars on the right side for days and days and days and suddenly it wakes up and it start to move up so you lose all the time uh, in uh, holding that so that's the kind of a target the red target which is the ultimate target it's like seattle i don't want to go beyond seattle i'm fine uh, and um you know calling it the end of my journey so red target the third target which is after yellow so the distance is far so if i'm entering at 100 the red target is 114 115 sometimes even 120 125 something like that so this distance is far since the distance is far so when the distance is far there are many unknown things uh, can happen it may never reach there it may reach but the time it takes uh, too much time you estimate it, it uh, more time and um, it may not reach there it may reach but it took so much time or uh, uh, something else happened and then you see your position going back to your entry price so before red before the red target hits i get the alert that the red target is approaching so you need to set the alert and you know if you're trading some kind of alert that uh, if a uh, red target is 114 you get the alert at 113 you set the alert at 113 so 113 is there for you uh, to take some kind of action which is flipping the chart and going on the lower time frame and seeing what else is happening at 113 maybe it's uh, headed towards 114 and then it goes to 115 116 it can happen like that so uh, just uh, it depends on your skill as a trader what what you are seeing and what you are taking action but since i'm trading sending you the trade alert so i send you the alert uh, that the red target is hitting and sell the rest of your position or sell all so there is a high probability of a stock pulling back uh, significantly from the red target because it's a it's a major target it's a overbought or a major resistance there or a major support in case of puts so uh, if I have sent you the alert before sell majority or sell half, then I send you the alert to sell rest. And the reason I'm doing all this, uh, sending you the alerts of three targets and sending you this so that you can maximize your gain. So it's people say, hey, Noshi, what is your win percentage? So imagine uh, you can be, uh, if you put on thousand trades, you can be right in 999 uh, trades but the one trade the loser one the the thousandth trade could be a loser which can wipe out all 999 winners so the win percentage was so high so if i put on 99 100 trades and 99 are winner one is a loser uh, somebody asked me what is the win percentage and i said 99 percent winner you know my win rate 99 percent you know who you're talking to 99 percent winner guy so it's not it's not right so you sh so uh, you need to know that you're not in the business of just um, getting the 99 percent win rate or 100 percent if 100 percent win rate as long as the 100 percent win rate you are fine but 100 percent win rate needs to go go forever as soon as you drop your win percentage below 100 which is 99 you can wipe out yourself your portfolio that one trade can wipe you out if your win rate is not 100 so so in other words the win rate is not the true indication of your trading performance so that's why i send you all these um, uh, 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 alerts to maximize your gain so i'm watching all the all the all the the targets and giving you guidance so if i have sent you the alert to sell half then i know you have uh, half a position so i send you the alert to sell rest so you would receive the alert sell rest but if you're reading the target 
uh, sell alert or sell risk and you did not pay attention to the previous then you would wonder why i'm saying you sell rest because you missed out the sell majority or sell half if let's say i have not sent you any alert before and it so happened uh, that there was no sell alert before so i know that i send you sell all and it can happen in uh, many scenarios so it can happen that the red target just uh, we we entered in a trade today and we got lucky and then it just went to the red target boom it just gapped up and hit the red target so it's there so i send you sell all it could be that we were holding this position for 14 days 15 days and it's uh, suddenly it wakes up and it just hit the red target so we don't want to hold uh, anymore because we were losing money and now we have a profit we may not have profit of 50 percent 60 percent maybe we have just 10 percent maybe it's at break even maybe it's a 20 percent loss so i send the alert to sell all sell all is done we need to close the trade so sell all or sell rest as red target now I'm also watching if there is a potential for the stock to break that resistance. If it's breaking the resistance and it's going further, then I send you the alert to do something at the red target. So imagine the red target, you set it up at some kind of a resistance level, which is a major resistance. So you, you did your analysis and you say, okay, this 115 in meta is the major resistance. It's just failed to cross. It just doesn't go. And I don't know uh, if it's doing, if it has done before three times, four times, five times, that it did not, it was unable to cross 115. There is a high probability it's uh, it may not cross 115 this time also. So you are better off to sell you, but um, there could be a um, situation where the red target is crossed um, with a bang. So maybe it gapped up, there's a news and it gapped up. It gapped above and it's far from the red target. So it gapped up at 118 119 level and the red was 115 so now you got lucky some news come and then it gapped up so when the stock gap up uh, it's called luck uh, not the skill so it so happened that you read the chart and you took some decision and um, the news come out next day maybe what made you uh, take the trade there was a news insider knew or somebody knew and they were buying it and you detected them properly and then the news come out next day and when the news come out uh, the stock gaps up and then you are lucky so stock gaps up above red target so when the stock gaps above the red target is like crossing the river so you just ended up on the other side of the river like on a riding a magic carpet so you were there here on this side and uh, within blink and you are on the other side so you woke up the stock is on the other side you're on the other side of the river and the river is wide and um, you know the dog is on this side he cannot come on the other side so the stock is on the other side of the red target and it stays there so as long as the stock so now when the when the stock takes out some major resistance your job as a trader is to evaluate what is going on at that time whether that uh, this gap up is true uh, it will continue or it's reverse if it's reverse where is the support level how how much it will it can pull back and if it pulls back it will not cross the red target which is 115 uh, it gapped up to 119 now it's trading at 118 oh my god uh, i was uh, having this much profit and now mm, i see my profit less so think about it your target was 115 it's trading at 119 and now it's 118 i know it's less profit but remember one um, red target you would have been happy at red at 115 now you are crying at 118 and maybe at 117 so at that time uh, i look at i analyze i analyze what's going on whether it's safe to hold as soon as i detect that it's safe to hold i send you the alert that if you have this trade open is still open uh keep it don't, don't sell it i will send you the strategy especially if it's a pre-market 
if the market, if the stock gaps above the uh, uh, gapping up, and I see it in the pre-market, there is a news. So there's a news, something happened in Meta and it's gapping up. So I look at the chart and I analyze. So I look at the pre-market action and I see that price. And then I look at the my daily chart and the daily chart is not moving i don't see it because it's a pre market but i know when the when the market opens where the stock will drop it's like you know a twinkle twinkle little star it just drops on the daily chart so you can you can see that okay this is the zone where in the pre market is trading mm -hmm. and when the market open it will come here so when it will come here what it should do I draw the line on the daily chart, support and resistance, etc. So I know the range. Now my job is not to look at the daily chart because I know already where it is. I flip the chart on a lower level time frame. So I'm evaluating that trade on a lower level time frame. What is going on? Whether it is safe to hold or whether to sell immediately. Sometimes uh, the gap it just gaps up, and then you know it. Uh, it uh, the gap fades. The, that gap was not a powerful gap so when that happened i send you the alert to sell immediately sometimes you need to sell at the market because there is no time to to sell and the limit order etc so we need to lock that gain so action to take a red target i send you the alert now let's say I, we decide that the trade is going uh, further up revise so i send you the revised red target market dynamic so think about it the market is dynamic uh you we need to be flexible in uh whether the red target is hitting whether to sell or to hold so we figure it out it's good to hold or it's good to sell if it's good to hold then i immediately revise the red target i will send you the alert red target was 115 now the new red target is and it's trading at 119 the new red target is 121 123 or whatever it is so to just to uh, to uh, make you aware that this is the red target and you need to cancel your sell order if you have the trade open cancel it and hold on for my further um, alert and uh, guidance so red target is revised to capture more gains now uh, for the calls the red target needs to be revised upward for the call the red target needs to be revised upward for the puts we revise the target to the downside and then i replace the target i say okay the yellow target was this now the red target is replacing the yellow and yellow is replacing the the green and this is the new red target so so uh, all that goes on sometimes so traders just make mistake here they they hang up on hang up on their original analysis and when they don't evaluate the trades on a daily basis, um, they're making a mistake. They're making a mistake as to maybe they need to revise the target to the downside. Maybe the stock, there was no resistance when you initiated a new trade. Now when you initiated the trade and seven days gone by, the trade, that symbol has created some kind of a hurdle, some kind of a resistance, and is struggling to cross that resistance level. It was not there and now it's there because uh, it's the market so when that happened i reduce i adjust the targets to the downside also or i send you the alert to sell all or adjust your targets this is uh, 114 is no longer the red target is 111 the stock is trading at 110 so please sell at 110 and 111 in between so the targets are adjusted to the downside also and you need to do that in your own trading so so we talked about selling at green yellow and red we talked about uh the the earnings could be coming we talked about the long weekend we talk about the weekend we talk about fo we uh, there is a fomc event there could be many events the like the debt uh, ceiling limit who knows uh, it what uh, um effect it will do on the market so there are many things so there there is a complex exits um, you need to have so the traders who make the money they have a complex exits multiple exits to maximize their gains so we talked about selling one third position 
uh, at green selling half at yellow or selling majority at yellow selling rest if we have done this before uh, selling all uh, at uh, maybe selling all at the green target uh, if if uh, if let's say we bought at 100 and the green was 104 and the stock went to 95 and uh, it stays there and then finally it come back to 100 the stock price our option is not the same whatever we paid is not there yet so if we pay 10 maybe it's trading at eight dollars and 50 cents because the stock went to 95 now it's at 100 and the green target is 104 so when it hit 104 maybe we are at the break even or maybe we are just making 10 10 percent so whatever is the reason maybe the green target became the resistance maybe that's what uh, where we need to sell so whatever is the reason i send you the alert to sell all maybe it's hitting the red target so if it's hitting the red target is hitting the major resistance whatever is going on the pullback there is a reason to sell all so i send you the alert to sell all now there is another um, uh, sell alert i also specify when the target when the stock is moving in a in a in a in a rapid fashion so let's say the stock is moving in a rapid fashion it's hard to uh so i estimate the upper boundary and i under uh, estimate the lower boundary so estimate the upper boundary and lower boundary so give out the range that meta is trading at 119 and is expected to move towards 121 today so somewhere between 120 and 121 so i send you the alert to sell meta calls when the meta is trading between 120 and 121 because it's hard to send the alert uh, to the penny so when the market become dynamic or very fast moving i give you the range or it could happen think about it you you entered in the trade and it gapped up you bought the calls and it gapped up and it did nothing but move up all day long is just moving up and up gradually moving or rapid fire moving and it's coming towards some resistance and you already know that so when it happens i send you the alert to sell by market close. So if you are not able to close 10 minutes, 15 minutes before the market, when you receive the alert, you sell it. Maybe you receive the alert at 11 a.m. Pacific, so you need to sell. Or if you can hold, you can watch, then you can sell 10, 15 minutes before the market close. So whatever is the price at market, you would lock that price. So this is, sometime it happens not all the time to, uh, most of the time the trade is moving in a normal fashion which is one third one half majority or rest sell all or sell price range and sell to close is um, uh, exceptions in the in the uh, sell alert now another thing which the traders miss out is watching their position in the pre-market so Traders don't if they do if you don't watch if you if there is an event occurring in your in the uh, symbol and you are holding it and something is going on in the pre market and you're not watching the pre market that's what you know like it's um, our elders say that the bird which wakes up early morning get the most so so you know if you if the market open at um, six thirty Pacific time and you wake up at, and come to your office or trading at seven you you miss out many you're not mentally ready to trade you might as well just keep your computer or thing shut down so i have uh, i have met few people they say oh no i you know i cannot wake up at 6 30 or 6 uh you know i like my sleep so maybe okay you like your sleep oh don't don't trade you need to come early in the morning and see what's going on so if you have especially if you have open positions if you have open position and the market that that position has a news and is gapping up so you need to watch the pre-market action and see what where is is trading what is the lower uh, price hit where is the high price hit what kind of event is occurring where it will land when the regular session start where do you expect that bar to print on your daily chart so you need to really know on a daily chart where that when the regular session is start where that bar will print on your daily chart because th th that's the day chart 
on an intraday level on a pre-market you can you can see where it's happening but on a daily chart you need to know where the bar will print and the bar will print and then uh, how far it it will gap up so all that analysis you need to do so sometimes it's magically it's happened if let's say the resistance is uh, um, the red target is 115 and you entered at 100 in meta and um, red target is 115 and yesterday it closed at 112 so it closed at 112 and it gapped up and the red is 115 and in the pre-market you see it's trading at 114 50 114 70 and 115 115 10 so you know that the red target is this and is trading in the pre-market at this level it better gap above the 115 or make a new high in the regular session than what it made in the pre-market only then you know that it, it's gapping up and the gap is is genuine so if it made a high in the pre-market at 116 and then it pulled back at 100 and 215 20 and it gaps up on a daily chart and it puts a print on the daily chart and you say oh yeah it, it's trading at 115 20 and my red target is 115 oh it's good but you don't realize that it, it traded above your red target maybe way way above it made a high of 119 in the pre-market session and then it pulled back at 115 and now in the daily uh day uh, on a regular session is even if it's trading at 116 it's not trading at 119 in what it was trading in the pre-market so when that happened it becomes like you need to be on a high alert that it was trading at 119 in the pre-market my red target is 115 even though it's trading at 116 it's dangerous i need to make sure that the buy buy trigger something which tells you some evidence you need to decide to hold so what is your evidence criteria how you decide that 119 in the pre-market regular session is 116 my red target is 115 um do i hold or i'm better off to sell at 160. so i do all this in my pre-market and if i if i figure it out clearly i do i i do send you the alert saying okay this trade is moving at um, um pre-market is making a high or making a new a new high or trading at this and here is the strategy especially if there's a news there and it will it will be very active and i can tell that you know you can tell that this is a very active uh trading going on so i send you the alert in the pre-market all the targets and some kind of a strategy what what you need to do so if you're trading on your own you need to you need to be doing all this so now um so when the red target hit so think about it if you are holding a position at red target which gapped up so you need to ask a question to yourself saying so again that's your uh, how you make your trading decision so you need to ask this question and you say hmm i see this is stock gapping up so if uh if i did not have this position and i just see this gap above the resistance would i create a new uh, would i initiate a, a a position so if the answer comes yes this gap is uh, is great and the support level is here it pulled back and if you if i did not have a position i would have initiated a new position if the answer comes yes then you need to do something and the something could be maybe you add you know maybe you just uh, hold that position and you do nothing you know just you uh, uh, google vanguard uh, founder he said um, something like that uh, do nothing just stand there so sometimes we uh, it's just you don't do anything you just stand there so it's, it's also a good strategy you just stand there you say okay i'm fine with it i have uh, this uh, open position i'm maxed out in this i don't have any any resources to add i you know that's it that's my final uh, i just hold hold on to this or you can add more maybe you can um, you have uh, calls in it and then you say okay let me buy 100 shares so you can buy 100 shares so you know you will lock the gains 
uh, you don't you you will be selling options and you are buying 100 shares so why why you, then you say okay why i will be selling option okay the reason i'm selling option because time to expiry is only 21 days so if i don't log the gains today in option uh, the volatility is high and all kinds of uh, things affect option but there are very few things affecting these stocks so i can buy the shares but option i sell because the volatility is high the premium is high and expiry is uh, just around the corner and i'm better off selling the option but i need to buy some shares because it's a brand new catalyst so you buy some shares or you say okay i'm i have too much profit in this the time expiry is less or i'm way in the money so i'm way in the money my delta is one and um, you know i bought it when it was 100 and now it's 120 so think about that you may be buying shares you may be selling your existing strike maybe rolling up um, one strike more so when you uh, rolling the strike one or two strike up, uh, more up then you need to also ask that is, am i buying the same month or the next month so if if the time is less in expiry you shouldn't be buying in the same month even though you're buying a new strike so you buy the new strike but you also buy the next month so you you have to decide at that time am i buying new strike and the next month onward to buy extra time or i'm just buying a new strike and the same month so so you have to make the decision also maybe you create a you sell a, a, a call against your call so you lock, you set your upper limit to the profit but you locked your gains so now you have a um, you have a locked in uh, gains by creating the vertical spread so there are so many things you can do when the trade is running in your favor uh, the worst thing you can do is just push the button and sell and lock the gains and feel good inside uh, look at me i'm the winner here i have this win gain and then you show off to your wife or your friend that how good of a trader you are look at this and then you don't show your losses so so you're not showing anyone you are showing it to yourself so add by buying shares maybe buy the same strike same month maybe you buy the new strike the next month maybe you create a vertical spread or just wait for the the trade to uh, keep going you have enough time and you're fine and you will sell after uh, two more days of run up something like that so there are various ways to maximize gains so from time to time i also send you the trade update so the trade update i sent is the news update any news if it's affecting and you need to know i send you if there's an article i see somewhere i share that resource uh, i prepare the chart and i send you the chart so i prepare the chart and send you the chart after the trade i uh, have a facebook group so you can ask me questions on the facebook group or uh, you can go on a youtube channel the real trade genie so the video is posted so so you, you, there's many things if the volume is accelerating as long as the volume is not a climax volume and i analyze the volume on daily basis i analyze the volume in the trade every 30 minutes so i have uh, built a system where i analyze the volume on the trade every 30 minutes on different time segments and i need to know what the volume is so if the trade is making you gains and then there is no volume there maybe it's time for you to sell uh, because there is no volume and you are already in the gain if maybe the, the trade is uh, doing above average volume and you have a trade and you have a profit so there must be some news that's why the volume is there so it's above average you may be holding it but if it's a way ultra high is crazy 500 percent volume and you are in the trade and you have a profit maybe it's the climax volume and maybe you need to sell so i do all that analysis and send you the alert so and then i also send you the alert to get ready in case something is moving very fast then i just send you the alert to get ready to log in i will send you the update so all that goes on now another thing people i believe in i so i believe in dollar cost averaging people don't believe in dollar cost i believe so i do the dollar cost averaging and i do the 
uh, I buy on uh, upside also more. So scaling in. So you need to be able to scale in both on the upside and the downside. So if you bought at 100 and it's, mm, your stop was 95, now it's trading at 110, maybe your stop well, went to your entry price at 100, not anymore 95, and the stock is looking good and it's giving you a brand new entry, maybe you need to scale in. So you scale in, you buy some more. You bought 100 shares before. Now this time you will buy 50 shares. Maybe you got lucky and the trade is moving, 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 moving. This time you will buy 25 shares. So every time you scale in, you buy more. And maybe you have a formula of buying uh, what you bought before 50% of your previous purchase. So if you initiated at 100, next time you buy, you buy 50 shares. The third time you will buy, you will buy 25 shares at the higher price level. So you buy only 25 shares. And then if you're buying the fourth time, then 25 divided by two is 12.5. So you cannot buy 12.5 shares. So you may buy 12 shares. So you bought 100 and then you bought 50 at a higher price. Then you bought 25 at higher price. And then you bought 12 shares at high price. So you scaled up, you piled up, but you raised your stop levels also. So you piled up in a winner. So it's a scaling. So if you can create this strategy, on the downside, you, we don't average down just for the sake of averaging down, you know, willy-nilly, okay, I bought at 10, it's trading at six, I think I better buy some more here, it looks interesting, or I just need to average down. Some traders, they buy at 10, then they average down at $9.50. So what good is averaging down at $9.50 when you already bought at 10? You don't have any edge, you just reduce your average price to nine dollars and seventy cents if that is uh you had in mind that you will buy three contracts and you bought one at ten and then you on a slight pullback at 970 you bought two maybe but uh, uh and it's, it's the same day but if it's a different day and a different uh the stock is trading in a different environment you don't want to buy you bought at 10 and you buy again at 970 it 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 you increase your risk you didn't in, decrease your average cost so you're not you did not create any any advantage it, it's not going into in your favor so don't do that the time to buy more is when you see something uh, some evidence on your chart that this is the time i need to average down maybe the stock pullback it pulled back it pulled back it was trading at 129 when you initiated your trade now it's trading at 124 so five points drop now it's trading at 124 and it's start to rise and you have concrete evidence that now it has a start, um, it's started to move in the same direction which i plan and my calls are trading at six so i would buy two more so when that kind of situation occurs i send you the alert that buy more if you can or there's always new members joining. So, you know, today there are, let's say, 100 members, tomorrow 105. So these members, five members, they didn't get their alert at 10. So they joined today. And it so happened, it's trading at six. So for those members and the existing members, I specify that buy more. So you know you have already existing position. And then I specify that if you don't have, you can initiate a new position at six. Sometimes we buy more. So think about that. You don't want to, when you're buying more, you don't want to put your good money into a bad money. Uh, and uh, 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 the good money, which was become a bad, kind of bad because you're losing and then you put more bad. Uh, because you may be seeing things correctly that the stock is moving in your direction, but you are not making the right choice in that trade. The choice is that you may want to buy a lower strike. Uh, you may buy want to buy more, but a different month. So you have to decide what buying more you are doing, if you're doing on your own. So for example, if let's say Meta, you traded at uh, 130, uh, you bought 130 strike, and the meta was trading at um, 129 at that time when you initiated the trade but then it went to 124 so when it when it went to 124 now it's trading at 126 so if you buy if you add 
to your 130 strike is kind of out of the money. So you have to decide, okay, this call is out of the money now and I'm buying more. Am I okay to buy? I, do I expect a fast move towards my target green? I mean, uh, I send you, the, so this what goes on in my head, uh, estimating that should I be buying more of the same strike and same month or should I be buying a uh, new strike and a new month or the new strike and the same month. So for instance, if the meta drops to 124 and it's rising, now it's 126 after dropping to 124. So my game plan changed a little bit. I say to myself, the game plan could be that I buy more of the same strike and same month. Or the game plan could be that I buy December uh, 125 strike, and which is trading at some price. And I would sell the December 130 call at break even because the break even trade is a win trade. So I say, okay, my target now is to sell the original strike at the break even price, but I am initiating a new trade. And in this trade, I will, I will um, make the money. Maybe I will sell as a basket. Maybe I'll sell the December 125 calls at the green target uh, or at the 130s the break even when the December 130 is at break even I'm making money at 125 and maybe I sell at break even maybe I um, uh, and one at break even and one at profit maybe I do like this December 130 is at loss and December 125 is at profit so combining making the basket I am coming out as a break even so once the trade is a become a uh, goes into a loser uh, the objective is to uh, come out as a break even, worry about the profit later. So I send you the alert to buy more or initiate a new trade. Uh, and it could be the same symbol. So uh, when, so sometimes you will say, okay, he sent the uh, Meta December 130, now he's sending Meta December 125 or January 125. So there are two strikes open and it could be two different months. And then we, 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 we manage that way. So you, would, you may receive buying more. The last slide is on conditional order and there is a, it's a different webinar. So, Think about uh, traders, they don't understand. I think they don't understand this also. When they buy option, so I send you the target based on the stock price. So if you entered Meta at uh, December 130 strike and Meta is trading at 129, you are making your decision or I am making my decision based on reading the stock chart. I'm not making the decision um, based on the option chart. I, do, I, I can't. Uh, although I look at the option data, but the 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 data you the chart you're reading is the stock, and then you are trading option. The stock chart doesn't know that you're trading option. So that your target is based on the stock, not based on the option. You can you can calculate your option target just willy nilly. Okay, I will sell this at a 50% gain or a 30% gain. My objective is to make 100% gain. All this is is uh, the numbers you're plugging from the air, you know, poof. You plug some number in your head and you say, okay, 100% looks, sound good. Uh, I will. I bought this contract at 25 cents and 100% profit uh, makes me very happy. I'll sell at 50, 50 cents, you know, when it turns into 50 cents. So that's your, uh, you're, you, you're just plugging it from the air. The stock doesn't know. So, the stock you need to read the chart and then determine the target so based on the target so i i uh, i will be sent, i will send you that i i do send the target based on the option that okay 30% this is 30% 50% and 100% or 75% gains and i can only send you the estimated option price at this stock target so for example if the stock is trading at 100 and the target is 110 i'm buying some option so based on the option formula i can estimate the option price what will be the option price when the stock hits 110 but it's just a calculation it's not a 100 percent perfect formula that 
uh, when the stock hits 110, this will be the option based on some delta or implied volatility. And then I plug in into black shoal model and I calculate and I say, okay, this is this will be the option. I may miss out in my calculation and then the option is uh, sitting there and it's not uh, hitting you know, my sell order is not. So the best way is to sell when the stock is hitting the target. So since uh, you're buying option, you can set the order based on the conditional order. So on your brokerage platform, if you don't know, you ask them, hey, do you have something called conditional order? Do you have something called activation rule? Uh, so that I, I'm trading, so it, uh, the broker will know and then he will say, okay, what's your purpose? So you say, okay, I am buying this option and I want to sell uh, this option when the target hit 110. So your conditional order will trigger when the stock hits 110, sell my option at market price. So whatever is the last price become the market price. So there is a catch here. If the option is not liquid, if the stock is not liquid, the last price could be anything and you can get filled at the absurd option. So you need to make sure when you set the conditional order, uh, it's a market order and that option is liquid option so the last price uh, is kind of in the last price is the somewhere between the bid and the ask so somewhere the mid price if that's not happening then you don't set the condition order if if the market is liquid and you know there's the you know you will get the proper fill then you set the conditional order so i explain in detail in another webinar what you can set so if you set the conditional order so when the target hits in the stock your option order become a market order and it sells sometimes it, it uh, uh, most of the time it works properly especially when you have open positions and you cannot watch the market so you say okay i cannot watch the market so i better set the conditional order so this is one thing you need to learn and i will explain sometime in the future and uh what let me uh so there is a question so this is a recording i will send you the recording uh to, tomorrow morning there is a channel on youtube called the real trade genie there are a lot of spammers and scammers you know they just everybody become trade genie so be aware so there is a channel called the real trade genie so i post this video tomorrow for somebody in my team uh can we get that formula so just uh google black shows formula is complicated you don't need to uh, know the mechanics of how the option work but if you want you can google black shows and find the calculator so how do you research when searching which option you want? So this is a the array. This is a um, uh, I will explain in detail you know, in another webinar how to select the proper uh, strike and its proper month. So you know, it's another half hour, forty five minutes. I will tell you in detail. Um, but if I am at work and want to automate it, is that possible? So Julie saying automate possible. Automation is very difficult, very complex, and uh, very time consuming, uh, resource in intensive, um, knowledge of technology. Uh, you don't have to do it. You can hire somebody to do it, but requires a lot of money. Unless you have a, a big um, capital you're trading, and you you know that if you automate you will create some edge over others um, i don't suggest you do automation but if you are a programmer yourself you have time you um, maybe you are not a programmer so i used to be programmer i used to be system person i used to be process consultant for sap i have mba in finance and uh, degrees in computers and um, commerce and whatnot so I don't do the programming, but um, I have resources. So, so there's a lot of automation. So you can do the automation little by little. You don't have to do all automation uh, in one shot. You can never do the automation in one unless you are just sitting and saying, okay, I don't mind sitting one, one year and pouring my money and giving out the ideas to my uh, tech guys and they go and create the system and then uh, so there may be some other resources you can do that so, or if you want to do the automation you do it in a piece by piece meal some component of your trading so for instance 
you can automate your cell so on the bro brokerage platform like trade station so you can go to the trade station and then you can um, learn a little bit of programming on their platform and you can set your cell strategy you can automate that part or or something like that and then you work backward so you work backward and maybe you can also automate your buy you know the system generates the sell uh, the buy trade and then it goes and buy and it goes at sell uh, it goes and scale in for you it goes and scale out so so big boys are doing it i'm not saying you cannot but it's too much money and too much time consuming but you can do it so yeah uh, so Manuel saying, uh, I sell at 40% uh, and I'm happy. So again, um, uh, we are not in the trading to make ourselves uh, feel good. I mean, we feel good, yes, when we make money, but just selling it so I feel good is not the criteria to sell to make ourselves feel good. So think about that. Uh, my phone is not giving me accurate option prices. They are usually delayed. Um, do you think it's my app or my phone that is causing me to not see the current prices? So I don't know, Lisa, if uh, if your phone is, um, maybe your phone is an old phone, maybe your internet is no good on the phone, maybe your brokerage is uh, give you delayed. Uh, some brokers, they give you 15 minute delayed on their data. So, you need a real time data. So maybe your phone is slow, maybe your phone is old, maybe your broker is old, maybe you don't pay them too much or the price they ask you for the real time. And yes. uh, all right, so that's it. What option trading software I use? I use TradeStation. And I don't invest in a dividend or just based on the dividend, I don't invest because a dividend can be great and then uh, the stock can tank. So what good is that dividend when the stock is tanking for my uh, price I bought and the dividend is, I'm getting the dividend. Yeah, I'm happy to see my dividend, you know, but the stock is tanking, so I don't like that. So I, you need to be flexible in, when you're trading, you need to, you need to know in the, your strategy, where is your exit door? If you cannot recognize if you don't know your exit door and your mercy at some mercy, then that's not a proper investment. So you don't want to be in trading where you are at a mercy. So you don't want to, I, in my opinion, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. I won't buy the stock just for dividend to collect the check. And then uh, what happened when they cut the dividend, when they suddenly decide that uh, dividend is cut, we are losing money, or we have decided to do the buyback and we are not buy, uh, doing the uh, dividend anymore so so suddenly your dividend is cut are you going to force them to give you the dividend they decided they don't want to give the dividend they want to reinvest in some product or services or they just decided to buy back their shares so how are you going to force you are at the mercy of the company so and the stock has tanked already. You bought it 100, you were collecting, let's say, 8% dividend. The stock is trading at 50, so you're already cut into half. And now they're saying, I don't want to, uh, we don't want to give you dividend. And then you collect the dividend and then you pay the taxes on it also. So God knows what is happening to my dividend. So I don't want such kind of a, uh, a mercy. I'm at the mercy of someone. So think about that. I don't do trading based on the dividend. I, I need to be flexible at my exit. When I want to exit, I want to exit. There is a window open and I just jump. So I need uh, as many windows in my room so I can jump. You know, when you're building your uh, house and they make you uh, to have a proper door and a proper window in case of fire. So they, there is a reason you need to be out of the window. And when you're jumping on the window, you need to make sure you will land in some kind of a, not on a, concrete somewhere where you land you land you survive so that that's the same phenomena it, um, for the trading so so just think about that uh, there is a movie that movie has a uh, robert de nero so that movie is set in some european countries so this is like a gangster movie mafia movie so robert de nero and his few friends they 
they they are meeting the other guys who are as bad as they are and robert de niro uh, and these guys they are entering in the building and then robert de niro tells his friends to wait uh, wait for me to come back and then he goes and then come back after 10 minutes and then his friend asks, hey where did you go he said never enter the building uh, when you don't uh, if you don't know uh, uh, when you are jumping out from where you will jump so in other words he went at the back of the building and he figured it out when he's coming out he may not be coming out from the front window he will be coming from the wind from not from the front door so the same phenomena when you are coming out you are coming out uh, kind of alive in one piece not at 50 percent haircut so i will stop here and i will be holding another webinar sometime in a week so I'll, you will get notified and thank you I'll see you next time.